Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal? Graphics in 3D space in After Effects. Now if you want to add a little spice to your graphics, titles, bumpers and animations then give them a little bit of three-dimensional space, something that we take for granted in our own world where we're in 3D space. It's very easy in After Effects and uh, I'll show you how we can do it with graphics, uh, just flat graphics in, in uh, 3D and also with video where there is no camera movement. I'll do one later about the 3D camera tracker, but here's some basic cool stuff. Let's have a look. All right, here I've got um, just a few graphic elements and I'm going to uh, animate those. First thing I'm going to do is I don't want the background to change, so I'll lock that. And actually there's this little Kilroy guy over here and I can hide that guy. So once I click there, he's still there. I just won't accidentally select him. Now by default, when you bring in two dimensional elements like this, over on the right hand side, this 3D box is not uh, turned on. If we add a camera, and I'm just going to leave this as the default two node camera, click OK, you'll normally get a uh, dialog box telling you that they're not going to affect three, uh, 2D layers, and it wants me to turn these as 3D. So uh, let me hide my camera too and I'll turn all three of these on and nothing changes. It just means we've now enabled 3D space. And if you look at the position information, you'll see 2D space. As soon as I hit, you'll see 3D space. So now we can start moving these around. You'll also notice that when I move into this area with the regular move tool, you'll see these little lines on here, these RGB arrows and where things are going and I can actually start to pull them off. So if I grab this one here and you'll see the little letter Z and I'm actually moving that forward and backwards in Z space. Same thing here, I'm moving that text in 3D space. By default, we have one view. We could do all the way up to four views. I'll just show you on this view here. This is an overhead view and this is the stuff moving around in three dimensional space. Pretty cool. So you can an either animate it here on the left hand side or animate on the right hand side. I'm just going to go back to one view now. There's a great little tool once you have a camera, if you hit the letter C or click on this, you can actually spin the camera around. Totally cool. Very cool. Now if we want to add a little bit more realism to this, we can add a light. So back to layer, new add a light and that light can be a spot, parallel point or ambient. We're going to cast shadows and I'll show you what happens when the, the shadow darkness is set to its default which is a hundred. Click OK and oh by the way I've already changed this so let me change this back. Down in here in our text material options cast shadows is off by default so when you add a light objects are not casting shadows until you open that up and then turn that on. Now, when I grab this light, and the light has the same controls, we can pull that light backwards and forwards and move it in um, 3D space. But that shadow is just way too harsh. And if you double click on the light and change that shadow darkness to something a little bit better, a little softer, a little lighter, and then we can also diffuse that. So we've got a softer edge. Now, when you start softening it and, and doing things like that, we're actually fighting with real physics. I mean, if, if something gets closer to another object, the shadow actually gets sharper or it can get softer. So we're just faking that around here when we make it soft, just for an artistic point of view. So let's grab the C key. And now you can see the shadow is stuck there behind on the flag. Pretty cool stuff. And then we could either animate the objects themselves or we could uh, animate the um, camera movement in here. And if we go back and show our camera and open up the properties for the camera, there's camera options of zooming, depth of field. You can actually have the depth of field turning on and off. If we double click on the camera again, you can actually see the depth of field uh, distance inside here and you can change that 
and have objects uh, going in and out of focus. And that depth of field is when you have uh, certain apertures in your camera. Uh, if it's the, a small aperture, if it's a cell phone, then usually everything is in focus. But if it's a DSLR, you can get me in focus and the background out of focus. Well, you can do the same with graphics in here. So that's all with static objects. This is a video shot with a static camera, but this is in fact video. And I've got some text in here and I'll show you that I can just hit the um, 3D uh, controls to turn that on. If I get the rotate tool, which is the W key, it's not R, don't ask, W, and the way that most After Effects users remember the W key for rotate is you say, rotate, like Elmer Fudd. Now let's rotate that text. Then I'll grab the move tool and move that text and you can see how it stays right in line. Let's duplicate that text. Move that out here, rotate it around, position it back in space, oops, position it back in space. I could probably lock my video background, but I'm not going to do that. Double click on that, in, let's duplicate another one. Double click on it over here to actually edit it. Get the rotate tool and now I'm rotating that back over there. Maybe snug that guy up over there. Now when I play that video back and render it, the text is sitting in place just like that. If we wanted to get select at all, and hit the T key and change the opacity. So now we've got text floating in 3D space, blending in the background, all in motion. So some quick and easy ways to make this work. If the uh, video is moving, then you require to track the camera, track the scene. I'll do that in another reveal uh, down the road. But this is just a cool way to start to work with these 3D graphics and place them inside your videos. Remember, I'm in Adobe After Effects here, but I could take this and put it right in the timeline in Premiere Pro. Hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please take a moment and click on the subscribe link below for video reveal. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, then get on over to adobe.com and download your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.